Oh yeah, okay, hello folks, and today, this week we're talking about blood sport. Joker, what do you know? I know him from the Harley or the Suicide Squad movie. That's about it. At this point, that's where most people know him from. Uh, I knew about him a long time ago simply because, um, well, we'll get into it, but he is like, he's known for the first person to really put like Superman on, like on the ropes. So let's get into it this week. Uh, if you like the episode, give us a like, share, follow, and uh, let's get into the real world of blood sports. So the character of Robert Dubois. Dubois? I knew that was going to happen, too. Yeah. <laughs> how, do you, how do you say it? Dubois. Dubois. It's French. I mean, I knew it was French, but I, I don't know the, the dialect properly. You know? I, I knew. As soon as I remembered his name, I was like, he's going to butcher this immediately. I kept trying to say it out loud when I was doing the research. And I'm like, I don't think that sounds right. No, very not. Dubois. Uh, created by writer and artist uh, John Byrne, first appearing in Superman issue number four, April 1987, as Bloodsport. So, kind of an old old one, but also kind of a new one. It's new to us, you youngins. I also 90s. love that we finally have a kind of major character that didn't debut in Batman. Oh my god, you're right. Majority of our villains are debuted in Batman comics. Holy cow, yeah, this is the... F- Except for, like, the one or two that were Flash villains. Yeah. So I'm very happy we finally have a Superman villain. We need to get on that. We need to do more Superman villains. And that- so the second incarnation, named Alexander Trent, would make his first appearance in The Adventures of Superman, issue 507, December of 1993, and was created by writer Carl Kessel and artist Barry Kinst- uh, Kitston. <laughs> So yeah, this, this is similar to many characters we've done. Multiple people have worn the moniker of of, of uh, Bloodsport, but it's one of those like there is the original one. Yep. That. So that's who we're mostly going to be covering. But let's get a few of these real world things that way. The third incarnation, known as Bloodsport Number Three, way to be original, uh, made his first appearance in Superman issue number six fifty two, July two thousand six, and was created by writer Kurt. Buziak and uh, G- Geoff Johns and artist Pete Woods. Once again, as always, I apologize for butchering names. I know at least the second one, that's Jeff. So I know that one's how to pronounce that, the second name, Jeff Johns. Huh, Jeff with a G. Kurt, couldn't tell you. Okay. <laughs> so Demolisha, a female version of Bloodsport, would be introduced by writer David Michelin and artist Kieran Dwyer. I'm hoping. Uh, and Dennis Rodier in Action Comics issue 718 in February of 1996, which she produced, uh, procured Blood Sports technology. And I will say, I couldn't find a lot of real world information on this character or his inspiration. But when we get into in universe, I think it's going to be self evident enough where his inspiration came from. And, That's fair. And the issues that, like, the message they, the writers were trying to send. So let's do this. Let's get in universe. He was drafted to serve in the United States Armed Forces. Upon receiving his induction Ooh. notice, Dubois fled to Canada, not because he was morally opposed to the war, but because he was afraid of death. See, so, at least I like that reason better than a lot of the like the draft dodgers. Like, yeah. no, I'm just afraid to die. Yeah, and uh, it's one of those, like, off the bat, it's like, well, this was definitely written by, like, somebody who had an opinion on the war. Yeah. <laughs> So Dubois' younger brother, Michael, would report for induction in his place, passing himself off as Robert. I don't know if I'd do that, but, you know. I wouldn't. <laughs> I'd tell, like, I, I think those of you who fought me long enough, I'd tell him where my brother went. I'd be like, he's there. I'll give you the exact address. I'll take you to him. <laughs> okay, so Michael Dubois was sent into combat in Vietnam, where he lost both his arms and legs. On learning that his brother had lost his limbs, Dubois went insane from guilt. Which, yeah. you know, <laughs> I get it. Yeah. It's kind of a effed up situation to find yourself in. Yeah, I mean, especially when the reason he's now completely crippled is because of you. Right? Like, God, that'd be horrible. <gasps> oh, Having that kind of guilt on your conscience. That would be. Especially if you liked your brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
So Robert was uh, finally contacted by individuals in the employment of billionaire Lex Luthor, who sought to pa- uh, sought a pawn to assassinate Luthor's arch enemy, Superman. Operatives of Luthor, under the direction of a man named Kimberly, uh, played upon Dubois' fixations on Vietnam in order to condition him psychologically to want to kill Superman. I mean, you know, guy yeah. lost his mind. But you also got to give it to Luther. He always knows how to play with people. Oh, 100%. Luther is a master manipulator. We should do an episode on him one of these days. Yes. So they also equipped Dubois with an arsenal of powerful advanced weapons, including a gun that fired needles of kryptonite. Dubois w- then went into action in Metropolis, calling himself Bloodsport. So, so what you're saying is he's got a needler. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't, even, I didn't put that together. Yeah, that's 100% what that is. I want his needler. Also, I just like, over the years, I've found it so... Like, what? Like why has only one dude tried the kryptonite bullet on Superman? I feel like it was an effective tactic. Everybody was like, well, it didn't fully work, so we're not going to go back to that. Who knows? Uh, the villains yeah. aren't the brightest. They are not. <laughs> So he would now claim that both his brother and he had served in combat in Vietnam and he had been injured there, professing rage at the citizens of Metropolis for wasting the freedom he claimed both his brother and himself fought to defend. Bloodsport would indiscriminately slaughter dozens of innocent people. You know, I guess they had to add another crime into his personality trait. Yeah, I'm like, it's pretty brutal, but I feel as though it's definitely a uh, writing trope of Vietnam veterans. I, mean, I was just more thinking about the, um, man, I can't think of what they call it now, but where he's claiming he was a soldier. Oh, um, stolen valor. Yeah. Yeah. I was more talking about that. Not even the slaughtering of innocence. <laughs> I wasn't even really, th- I was thinking more of the whole, like, I love, like, this is a weird, which I get it because I, I have uncles who served in Vietnam when they came back. They're like, yeah, I did not receive a warm welcome. And oh yeah. The whole, like, I fought for this country. I'm yeah, like, a lot of people had that issue, which it, is fair. And I get like I get what they're kind of trying to go with in that, but they're like, let's make him crazy, right? <laughs> let's have a billionaire take advantage of this man who served our country, which I also think is a commentary on society. It really is. <laughs> so, in his first clash with Superman, Bloodsport severely weakened him with a kryptonite bullet. After receiving medical aid, Superman confronted Bloodsport once more. Even though Luther, outraged by Bloodsport's murder of so many people due to the attention this would attract to his assault, uh, attempted to stop the mad killer. Luthor. (laughs) Always making weapons you can't control. Yeah, he's got a bad habit of that. (laughs) The amount of times he's done, like, mm, we could go through a list, but continue. (laughs) Uh, So Superman succeeded in causing... A teleportation device Bloodsport used to bring weapons to himself to malfunction. Uh, Bloodsport then threatened to detonate his teleporter's power pack, blowing up 10 square miles of the city. That is a crazy power pack. (laughs) Right? I would not want to be carrying that on me. It's kind of, yeah. There's been multiple times in, in like, comic books and, like, superhero things where, like, a character has something that just gives them power, like, the ability to do stuff like this. But if anything goes wrong with that device, the whole city's going to blow up. I'm like, if a, somebody offered me, they're like, this will give you super strength and the ability to teleport weapons to you. But mind you, if it goes on the fritz, you and everybody within 10 miles will die. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good, man. Yeah. I'm nope. good. You know, give me, a, give me a gun. I'll do it. I'll do it myself. <laughs> so... Superman's friend Jimmy Olsen had learned of Bloodsport's true identity and located his brother. Confronted by Michael, Bloodsport collapsed in grief and was taken into custody. I mean, yeah. That's fair. That's Yeah, I can see that <laughs> happening. Just throw a little bit of reality at him. <laughs> it's amazing how well that seems to work on people. <laughs> There's many times where I'm like, why don't we just do this from the beginning? Because that makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) So Dubois would have a brief encounter with Deadshot, which was eventually broken up by Superman and Batman. I mean, I can see that. I can see the two of them, you know, having some kind of beef with each other. I mean, 
<laughs> They're essentially the same person. Just one's better at hitting targets. Yeah. <laughs> one's a little more trained on that. The other one's just kind of a <laughs> spray and pray. Yeah. <laughs> so Dubois mm. remained in prison for several years and eventually earned the he earned the anonymity of another pri- prisoner on Strikers Island, who had since taken up the name Bloodsport Alexander Trent. Hmm. Somebody's stealing his uh, moniker. <laughs> Probably not going to end well. <laughs> So as racial tension began to overwhelm Stryker, uh, Strikers Island, the prison warden decided to host a boxing match between Dubois and Trent. Uh, he believed that this was an ideal way to allow the inmates to vent their frustrations without inciting further acts of violence. Because, you know, that never turns out bad either. I mean, I get, I get the logic behind it, but I'm like, man, maybe we should have thought this a little, a little more through. I don't think I don't think I don't think racism can be solved with a boxing match. <laughs> you know. So, to safeguard the situation, the warden asked Superman to referee the match. The riot, uh, the riot broke out, resulting in Dubois getting his hands on one of Trent's weapons and using it to blast a hole in the prison wall. Dubois ran for freedom, but was apparently shot dead by armed prison guards in the watchtower. Yeah, that was. Pretty anticlimactic ending for the character. It really is. And that, like, it's one of those, though, I will say, what I kind of love what they're doing now with characters like this is kind of bringing them in for the movies and shows because there's so little on them that you can't really mess it up. Right. Like, it, like when nobody's going to be satisfied with a Batman or Superman movie. Because you're ne- these characters have too much legacy in history. Yeah. You're, you're not going to get it right. You bring in this guy, nobody even knew who Bloodsport was before the Suicide Squad movie, except for people like me. <laughs> yeah. And even us, we were like, I mean, because people I know were like, of them. Yeah, people were like, is that accurate? I'm like, accurate enough. Character was in like five comics. <laughs> so. I mean, that's also nice, too, because especially when characters like this are being brought into something like Suicide Squad. And the way they just kind of killed off half the crew. Oh, right. I'm like, you really don't know who's who's fair game. Exactly. Certain big names you know are going to be safe. But you don't know with someone like him. Exactly. Like, this is a character that they could have just killed off. And most of us would have been like, yeah, okay, that's fair. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, following the events of Dark Knight Death Metal... Uh, Dubois was reintroduced back into the DC universe after his brother's death. His mental state deteriorated, uh, leading him to become the mercenary Bloodsport. After failing to kill Superman, he was sent to Bell Rev until uh, he was forced into the Suicide Squad with the task of exploring the multiverse for Amanda Waller's own personal ambitions. Because, of course, it's Amanda Waller. Right? Also, who she is. I just feel like he's the most random character to be like, hey, I'm going to send you into the multiverse for me. Well, I mean, it, it works because they let apparently had enough of a reason that they wanted to bring him back. Yeah, I guess he had enough fans. I mean, <laughs> it, it works. It makes sense. I just feel as though the whole add in of she's like, Man Waller was like him. I want him to explore the multiverse. <laughs> I'm like, feel like there's an assortment of other characters that would be more equipped power wise to do that. This guy's just a dude with a gun. <laughs> yes, that's more of I'm like weird. Weird plot to send him into. I feel like there were other plots they could have been like, mm, he's a good character for that. That's fair. I do want to read that, though. I am curious now. All right, so that's kind of what we got for uh, Bloodsport. Like I said, not a lot in universe of this character. He was kind of a niche character to begin with, which I found weird because, yeah, he was one of the characters that like brought, like almost killed Superman. Yeah. Like, that's a huge accomplishment. I mean, when, when only one person's actually done it, it's pretty impressive for anybody else to get close. Right? Like, this is the dude who, like, put, like well, like they said in the movie, put Superman in the ICU. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's get into powers and abilities. So, he's a formidable hand-to-hand combatant, which I think makes sense, you know, given the training he probably got at some point. And also the people he's had to fight. 
So he's in possession of a device that enables him to teleport high-tech weapons to him from a distant location instantaneously, with many being one-of-a-kind prototypes from advanced LexCorp research projects. Which I did kind of like they kind of use that in the movie. Yeah. like they Because they don't really show where all this stuff on him is coming from. I do like, though, that they have a reason behind it. Yeah. Like, it's very much that cartoon or video game, like Infinite the, Pockets. Yep, the Infinite Pouch. <laughs> so he is incredibly strong and significantly more durable than an average human. Which, yeah, I feel like given some of the missions he's gone on, you'd have to be. Uh, Dubois, re, uh, Dubois' reflexes and senses are extraordinarily keen and allow him to respond to Deadshot and alarm Superman. Which, that's impressive. Like, to alarm Superman? Right. Like mm, That takes a lot. That does. <laughs> uh, he's a quick and accurate shooter with a wide variety of firearms from handguns and uh, shoulder fire weapons. He's a fully... And this is kind of impressive. He's fully ambidextrous uh, as a marksman and can shoot with either hand without losing any accuracy or speed. Which I know, like, some people are like, is that power? I'm like, have you seen an ambidextrous person? Yes, that's a power. It is impressive. It's very. <laughs> uh, a, he's also... Uh, he stood to, uh, toe-to-toe in a boxing match against Alexander Trent, a man with borderline superhuman strength and reflexes. Which is an impressive feat for a normal human to be able to do. Oh, definitely. So that's kind of what we got for his powers and abilities. I do love like the high, like the high tech weaponry concept. Oh, definitely. Especially the teleport porting it. Yeah, right. So into his other media in TV, he appears in Supergirl, which I completely missed that. So now I kind of want to go back and watch that episode. Right. Um, he also has a non-speaking cameo in Justice League Unlimited. In film, he appears in the DCEU film The Suicide Squad, portrayed by Idris Elba, which was, like, perfect. Oh, God, yeah. Uh, and then a hybridized version of appears in the Justice League versus the Fight, Fatal Five, which this version is a blend of Trent and Dubois, and is a deranged conspiracy theorist rather than a white supremacist. Because that would have been Trent. He was a white supremacist. Yep. That was the big part of his character, apparently. I, I think they're like, mm, let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably the better call. Probably. Would have probably not gone over well in this no. climate. Oh, God, no. <laughs> uh, and then he in video games, he appears as a skin in Fortnite Battle Royale. Oh. So he doesn't really have much. Yeah. Which is weird that he's got less than some of the other tiny characters we've done. Because I'm pretty sure Kite Man had more than him. I think you're correct. <laughs> and what's bad is like, like what bothered me since day one of knowing of this character since I was younger was like, this is the dude who like the first guy to just be like, why don't we just shoot Superman with a kryptonite bullet? <laughs> right. Why are we dancing around this subject guys? And that like, I, I enjoy it. Like, okay. So I guess like us being done with this, we ask the question we ask every time, uh, you a fan joker? Definitely. I mean, a big part of that is because of Suicide Squad and Idris Elba, but his character seems so interesting, especially I mean, the original version. I mean, Idris Elba, I fucking, I, I love that guy as an actor. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I think he <laughs> nailed the role. And yeah, no, I, I've i been a fan since kind of day one, like, just because as a villain being able to take out Superman and just, basically, he's just a dude. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. Like, he doesn't even have any legitimate military training. It's just a crazy dude out there with a gun. America. <laughs> Simple, yet effective. So I'm a fan too. For anyone that's still listening, if you got something out of this, enjoyed the episode, or even liked the character before from a movie, comic, cartoon, hell, even that t-shirt that you saw one time, you're a fan too. If you want to jump on this train, why not subscribe and share with a friend? Dick Rail out. Y'all keep riding them rails.